As cities grow and change, with new buildings and developments popping up all over the place, sometimes historic buildings get caught up in the mix. Today I am standing in front of the Culver House in St. Louis, Missouri, which is at risk for demolition as the Powell Symphony Hall expands its building. Hi everyone, my name is Ken. Welcome to This House. All around the world, historic buildings have been demolished. But why does this happen? In the case of Penn Station in New York City, it was to expand the infrastructure for the growing population. In Chicago, the Prentice Women's Pavilion was torn down because it couldn't gain landmark status. Even the architecture of Frank Lloyd Wright was not spared as the Imperial Hotel in Tokyo began to sink into the mud and was subject to demolition. More times than not, historic neighborhoods are razed to the ground by greedy developers looking to cash in on new developments as they gentrify the area. But this is not the case for the Culver House. The Culver House was built in 1886 and designed by notable architect Jerome Bibb Legg. The house is one of the last remaining examples of residential architecture in this part of St. Louis as nearly the entirety of the former neighborhood has been demolished to make way for parking lots. Losing this house would mean losing all semblance of the area's history. There would be no indicators that it was ever a thriving neighborhood in the early days of the city's history. It seems like the answer here is obvious, that we should preserve the house and keep it from being demolished. But what is the trade-off? Is it another parking lot? Powell Hall has budgeted $100 million to expand its building where the house sits. The new expansion would include 65,000 square feet of space to allow for a new lobby, backstage area for musicians, and new educational facilities. Powell Hall has outgrown its building as the chorus and orchestra do not have dedicated spaces to warm up and rehearse ahead of live performances, which is a problem that can only be solved by adding new space. The planned expansion would be incredibly beneficial to artists and the community, as it would create more space to nurture and grow the arts while supporting local artists. Supporting the arts is paramount to growing a community. But is this the best solution? Many people are asking why we can't have both. A saved historic house and more space for the Pal Hall. They are also asking why the building needs to be larger when there is space to design a separate building in a nearby lot. So this brings us back to the question. In the name of progress and innovation, should this building be torn down and replaced with an expansion to a building that will greatly enhance the community, or should it be saved? Let me know what your thoughts are down in the comments. I'd like to thank you all for watching. Please make sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. I'll see you next time on This House.